lot of trouble. All season, Liverpool have conceded 14 goals in the Premiership. And we see in the first 45 minutes, they could have conceded four or five quite easily. Better finishing. They don't hit the target enough for this field for me. They're in. I mean, where's the, the two centre halves and the back? That was the best the chance of all. That's I thought he's chance. hit it under. Yeah. I think he, took, he could have just pushed it out of his feet to get a view of the goal. I just thought he could His finishing's been good. He scored 12 already this season, so it's not like him. A lot of stuff's coming through Thornley down the left uh, in that first half. He had a pretty good half. Didn't dangerous. He, Barry? Very dangerous. Oh, yeah. Coming on his right foot, he can go down the outside and he's getting plenty of ball. Tony made a very good point. Gerard's not been protected in front of him by Smita at all. Yeah. So as, if they can get the ball out to him, that's probably the best outlet. We've seen a couple of shots at Doria, and he could have had a, a couple of goals as well. Hasn't good. He has. He's good. If, if he could uh, get in the game more, I limited think Limited involvement, yeah. I agree with you. Huddersfield very much in it. So, it's yeah. England against Germany in the summer. This is Huddersfield against Liverpool. Let's rejoin our commentators for the second half. Ron and Clive. And just before we talk about Huddersfield present and Liverpool present, a word about the past of these two great clubs and one man's memory who reunites it because it was the 14th of December 1959 when Bill Shankly left Huddersfield to take charge of Liverpool, a 40th anniversary which comes up on Tuesday and which will be celebrated next Saturday at Anfield with a parade of some of his former players before the game against Coventry, amongst them one Kevin Keegan. Certainly one of the most remarkable men I've ever met. And one of the most remarkable cup ties of the weekend is back in swing with Huddersfield as they have been on the attack. Weinhardt, stolen from him by Gerrard. And the header away is by Herpia. This is Haman. Now Murphy. And now Dominic Matteo who came on as a first half substitute for Steve Staunton. Haman. Camera nailed by Gray. Gore to Irons. Now Marcus Stewart. On show slips. Stewart goes on. Plenty happening to his left. This is Sellers. Slid through towards Weinhardt. Hope you managed to get to that one. Michael Owen. Liverpool haven't been able to bring into the game as much as they would like in the first half. Well, apart from that one little chance when he tried to chip uh, Basson, he's been forced really, and that may be clever play to have the ball into his feet most of the while, and then they just close him out and ask him to knock it back. Just Michael Owen spent a lot of time linking the play, which is not really his game. Matteo, this is Camera. Dietmar Hamann is uh, in need of some attention at the moment. Here comes Gerard. Camera trying to slip away from Armstrong. Oh, Gray's touch wasn't the best. Here is Owen, who is being wrestled by Sellers. But the decision has gone against him. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought that, Michael. Anyway, here comes Ben Thornley. Oh, and Thornley was caught by Herpia. No free kick there either. Owen through towards Camera. Mr. Harris has left his whistle in the dressing room. Uh, he stopped play now because Thornley needs some attention. Now, Herpia put a very strong challenge on him, but I tell you what, a better ball would have actually got him in. The ball was a bit, a bit too close to the defender. He did win the FA Youth Cup with uh, Manchester United and the team of Giggs and Scholes and Butt and Gary Neville, Ben Thornley. I suppose uh, hope you got some of the ball there. But uh, the injury to his knee in uh, a reserve team match in 94 set him back 18 months. He got back into the England under-21 side actually, played alongside uh, David Beckham at that level. But it's really in the last 12 months with Huddersfield that people have really started to look at Ben Thornley again, particularly under the guidance of his former teammate at Manchester United, Steve Bruce. Matteo's there. Throwing his Liverpools. Good volume of noise from the crowd, though, wasn't it? 
they're getting they you know they haven't given up they, they still think their team's in with a real chance Beinhart kept it in hope you got it away Vince nice beautifully played into the path of Thornley to run away from him Sorry then for the referee really to stop the momentum of the game. Liverpool have got the possession they wanted, it's broke the game up. And the last thing we want with this game is for the momentum to stop. I think Liverpool, if they could, would try and try and control the tempo a little bit, the pace of the game. Try and steady it up a little bit, but uh, that's the last thing Huddersfield really wants. Carragher to Owen. Sweet set. Carragher to Haman this time. I wonder if he was told the uh, Euro 2000 draw during the half time interval of the German international. Here's Gerard tiptoeing forward into some space. Lifted into Schmitzer. Looked out of the air by Nico Vassen. I think we should be a little bit fair as well to Liverpool. While we tended to talk mainly about Huddersfield for natural reasons, Liverpool have played in a good way, haven't they? The Liverpool way, if you like, they've controlled it, they've passed it, they've played with assurance. Certainly when they've been in possession of the ball. Scott Sellers. It's caught by Schmitzer. On the one hand, Liverpool want him to come back and try and help out Gerrard, but on the other hand, the problem is that because he's not a natural defender, he's going to give some free kicks away. I think he's also fortunate not to go in the book for that. He's given that little innocent look, but I, think, I don't think he wanted Sellers weaving at their penalty area with possession. Now, can Huddersfield turn exactly their own brand of punishment? What they really want to do is get the two big centre-halves out of the way. Vincent takes. Enter away. It's by Carragher. Struck by Gore and deflected behind by Gerard. Don't think it was quite goal bound. Although Gerard could have guided it to his own net. It's a well struck shot. There's the free kick. It's headed out and he's coming up with Gore now. He's hit it well. Oh, it would have gone close. Anything could have happened with that one. Vincent will take the corner. towards Reinhardt well, literally beats the turf in disgust I think I just wondered here Clive whether he's taken this off irons he's come off the line he's going he's coming away from goal to get the header on here Kenny Irons is flying into the space that the ball might just drop in he was certainly next to the queue wasn't he yeah a better view here Rob yeah. oh, oh he was from the tell you but I mean obviously he's pent up, he's wound up, he's trying to get the equaliser, he's not aware of people coming in from that position. The ball from Carragher to Camera. Now Sweetson. Come on. Oh, it's fallen for Owen. We didn't expect it to come his way. He couldn't quite get it out from underneath his feet. But I, mean, I thought Hamann might pull the trigger himself there because he has got a great shot from that distance. And of course, attacking the end of the McAlpine Stadium behind what's their supporters, 4,000 of the 24,000 inside the ground are gathered. Both clubs could have sold more tickets. Irons has gone down sorely. Murphy though to Hamad. Now Spitzer, Huddersfield a bit stretched here. Spitzer's pulled it back. It's Hamad! That was a great chance. Spitzer's completely wrong footed the defence. Everybody's looking for the ball played into the near post. 
Owens made the run. They're all making uh, runs for the near post, and he's completely, completely on Mark Hammond. I said about a minute ago, and he is a good knocker of the ball, and he's leaning back, he's skied that one. I, I actually thought he would have rocketed that in the back. It's only his ninth game for Liverpool, you know. He's had ankle problems ever since he signed for the club, and they paid £8 million for him in the summer, twice as much as any of Gerard Pouliez's other signings. In the last couple of months, they've got uh, Poncho and Herpier together. I think he's going to be vitally important as well, don't you, without Redknapp in the side? Well, I say, they haven't really been able to get those two together, Haman and Redknapp, and they can't get Owen and Fowler together. Thornley. Now Beinhardt, now Stewart. That's a lot of Gore, he might just reach it. Rolled into Beinhardt. Second's gone the other way. Stefan Onshow getting the benefit of any doubt. Well, linesman in referee in perfect unison there, but it's a surprising decision. In that position, you would have thought it's more likely the defender's going to have to foul. You can't see much wrong in that. I mean, most forwards would. I mean, that was Pelly's strength if you want to go a step further, holding people off with his arm. him down there he's trying to take his chance Danny Murphy he's had to wait for it this is his uh, third season with uh, Liverpool back on the younger England 21 seed Phil Thompson always animated but Gerard Ullier looks a little nervous still Sellers Stewart some grass to run onto. Stewart's cross. Quite long enough. Dealt with by Gerard. Oh, yeah. Wrapped up by Sellers. The referee could have been closer. <laughs> it's almost a submission. <laughs> Paul Marks has got celebrating the game sometime. Still very, very enthusiastic about it. When Vincent's touch might have turned that into Sweetsy's path, and that's a corner kick as a result. Murphy is on the way. Them though, turned away by Stewart, back in by Murphy, away by Gore. Gerard did get a little tug then from Beinhardt, but only before the referee had turned his head. I'll tell you what, if, if Huddersfield get a corner in the next few minutes, I can see Brucey coming on for it. <laughs> I'm also wondering if they ever did drop the tempo. They've got Donis on the bench, haven't they? Who's as quick as anything in the game, really. Gorgeous Donis, the Greek international winger who's been out for entry. Yeah, well, they could just come on with a 15 minute burst if they need it. But come on, they, it's wise to let it go as it is. The side's doing ever so well. Perhaps not quite as cohesive as they were in the first half, but uh, they're still keeping the percentage of the game. Thornley takes. Not the best. Made away by Hamad. For me again. Sweetser though. Now camera. Liverpool have got an army charging forward to his left. And heading that army is Deep Mahaman. He'll leave it though for Dominic Matteo. On the outside of Irons is Matteo! <laughs> Liverpool lead by two goals to nil. And from one end of the field.
midfield to the other in the blink of an eye. And Dominic Matteo was the man who rounded off that dramatic counter-attack. But I tell you what, Kenny Arnes is desperately unlucky. He slips just as he's trying to jockey uh, Matteo, and that might leaves Matteo on his left foot, going in on goal. Unfortunately, keeper couldn't. He's had a hand on both goals. But that's the ball that really makes it. They're queuing up on the counter to take that. The say keeper's had a touch on both goals, but hasn't done quite enough to prevent them going in. Lightning break for all for Huddersfield. It's only the second time that Dominic Matteo's name has appeared on the Liverpool score sheet. Graham Sudes gave him his uh, first run in the team six years ago. Glad Hoddle called him into an England squad or two, three years ago. His career's never quite taken off in the way it's promised, but he took off then. And as a substitute in the left-back role that he doesn't altogether favour, Dominic Matteo has given Liverpool some breathing space in a breathless cup tie. Yeah, there he slips. That's unlucky. Whether he'd have stopped him, I don't know. He, he possibly may have forced him to go slightly wider. Well, that is the expression of a board winner who's seeing the prospect of victory slip away from his team. Steve Bruce's Huddersfield trail by two goals to nil. Sellers. Headed down by Gerrard. This is Carrigan. Here's Matteo. Camera. Turned away by Francis. Corre to Sellers. defending one way or another with Michael Owen in the vicinity. I think that Michael Owen was a bit upset that Smisa didn't go and join him in the penalty box. Kenny Irons. Dean Gore. Straight to Hornshaw. Steven Gerrard. Michael Owen. Carragher to Matteo. Very seldom is it more than two touches when it's in midfield. Liverpool train, that's a beautiful ball. Carragher to Sweetson. You know, they spent a lot of money in Liverpool, but you look at the local talent that's on this field, and it's very, very heartening because even in the late 70s and 80s when they were probably the best team in the world, they weren't actually bringing all that many local players through into the first team. But we've got Gerard at right back here, Matteo at left back, Carragher now competing for the ball in midfield, not to mention Owen and Fowler. Thornley. Whether they've been warned about him at half-time, Ben Thorley. Ben Thornley, certainly he appears to be a bit quieter this half. And in actual fact, just before the break on the second goal, unfortunately, he lost possession a bit easy. By half. Crossed in towards Gorey. Has some catching up to do. Kenny Ives. Jenkins to Stewart. Couldn't quite turn. Away as far as Thornley. Now Stewart. Great. Sellers. Beinhardt. Sellers. Leading back. Tell you what, in the last third, though, he can still winkle things out, Scott Sellers. With a threaded ball in here. Comes at him a bit fierce. He can't quite get over it. And you would say the worst part of his game today, or the least impressive, has been his shooting. 
by the third shot he's had for his general link up play. His enthusiasm, his energy has been top draw. Well, we've had a fantastic atmosphere here today. It's the travelling Liverpudlians who are making much of the noise inside the McAlpine Stadium. reaction for the home fans. This is Thorne. Familiar barrier provided by Gerard and uh, Schmitzer. And this is Camera, and that's a terrific ball. It's Michael Owen now. Oh, and somehow Vincent caught up with him. And Owen's hesitation cost him dear. Real opportunity there for Michael Owen to put Liverpool over the hills and far away. Instead, it's Marcus Stewart. Tackled over by Hornshow. Yeah, Jamie Vincent did remarkably well, did brilliant aim to make up the ground, but you can't believe that Michael Owen in that position would give anybody a second chance to catch him up. Camera played him a perfect ball right into his run. The sort of ball that, uh, if you wanted one player in the world to be on the end of it, it'd be Michael Owen. Whether that's a little bit of um, confidence, not quite as high as it is when he's at his best. Maybe needed an extra touch where normally you just take it and slot it without thinking. That's a good ball. Meinhardt trying to get the on show. It's tried by Hart. Half a dozen chances he's had. And he gets them, he gets the majority, you know, Clive, but at starting position, he has got a great knack. Look at his position here between defenders. Good first touch, good strength, outstrength the defender. Got it all on the keepers, taking up a bit. You know, he's still in a big part of the goal, but... And that's the ball. Look at that. How many times would you put your money on there? It just dwells, the ball slows a little bit, but... That's Michael Owen trying to be too sure. Confidence, not quite as high as normal. Camera, speaks up. A man. Gerard. Gerard, I know he's not quite on the same wavelength there. You know, Huddersfield paid three quarters of a million pounds for Clyde Vinehart in the summer. Will one or two Premiership managers be sitting at home after their Sunday lunches thinking, why didn't we think about him? Oh, I tell you what, on the evidence of that, yeah, he's missed some. But, I mean, you look at his record of the season, he's weighed in, what, with a dozen already, and you can see why he gets goals. It has been a handful. Sadly for him and for Huddersfield, he hasn't been able to finish off a lot of his own handiwork. Camera's little flick on towards Mattia. We are going to see the uh, Greek winger, Georgios Donis, of whom Ron Atkinson was speaking a moment or two ago. He is imminent. On the ball is Kenny Irons. But quite apart from being Huddersfield's captain, is a lifelong Everton fan. You think you need extra motivation on days like this? Irons has got it. That's why it's particularly cruel, you know, when he slipped in the box. Because I tell you what, there's not been many better players on the field than Kenny Irons today. I don't suppose you'd know who is the uh, coach of the Liverpool schools under-15 team, would you? It's Kenny Irons. He's a Merseysider and still lives there. It's so the quarter of the match remaining. Sweets are looking for Owen, Armstrong's there. It would be great if Huddersfield could nick one and get it to 2-1 and who oh, wouldn't half have a game on then. Hines to Stewart. This is Gora. Fine Hart couldn't reach it. Certainly on shows hands were on his shoulders. Shows again though the value how he gets himself nestled inside defenders. He doesn't make it easy for defenders to clean things out. He was involved in a very contentious penalty appeal at the end of uh, Huddersfield's Worthington Cup exit to Wimbledon. There was some 
talk of the club threatening to sue Jeff Winter for not giving a penalty against uh, Dean Blackwell that night. I've seen uh, replays of the incident. There's no doubt that Blackwell caught Vinehart, but no doubt that Vinehart was holding Blackwell's shirt. Owen is offside here. There's going to be a decision and a half for Steve, you know. This is going to show uh, where managers have to make decisions. Who, if he brings Donish on, who's going to take off? Because it'd be hard pressed to who he's going to take off. Whether he's going to take one of his wide players off, go with three front players, I don't know. Nothing to do for, Black, uh, for uh, Vinehart again. Or whether he just replaces a striker one for one, but those strikers, Stewart, to be fair, this half hasn't been quite as prominent as he was in the first half. But they've always given the impression they can, they can get something. And this fellow's been excellent for me. Sellers to Irons. Now Thornley. That's been the difference. At this half, a big difference. Gerard has won a lot more ball. Here goes Owen. Pass one, pass two. Forces the save. That's Michael Owen in full flow. That's encouraging, though. I'm sure if he'd have took his, his earlier one, the Camara like Camara he done for him, and just took it out of his feet like that, I think he'd have been on the sheet now. Gorey, though, for Huddersfield. Held up by Murphy. Quick dispossessing, though. On goes Gorey. Showed too much of it to hurt you. Still forced it into the edge of the box. Sweet sir, let Gerard down there. Vincent has found Stewart. Oh, he could have gone on, I think. Owen. Oh, he's wrestled again. There's no doubt about it. A bit of a complex building up here. Almost out of Beckham. Because of Michael Owen and who he is. He is short of real match fitness at the moment. And maybe he shows some effectiveness as a result. But that doesn't mean he's immune to being fouled. Liverpool have got Rigobert Song stri stripped off and Huddersfield have got Georgius Donis stretched off. That's the bottom FA Cup with a check going off to be replaced by a Cameroon international. And that itself is a mark of respect, I think, to Huddersfield. Next to the defender on by the look of it. And a Greek international coming on to replace Ben Thornley. Yeah, I think what will happen now, yeah, they'll go three midfield by the look of it. Donis will come on the right wing. Um, Gorry will move in field one and Sellers will do the left-hand job so they can retain the balance. Looks like Steven Gerrard just going to play in front of Rigobert Song now in the Liverpool right. He really is a play anywhere player, Gerrard. But George Donis is an interesting uh, character. He was courted by all the top clubs when Blackburn signed him in 1996. But no sooner had he arrived than first Alan Shearer and then Kenny Dalglish left. And uh, he had a rather unhappy time before Steve Bruce brought him back from Greece in the summer. He's been injured recently. Sellers. Here's Stewart, who is a goal scorer, Jewel Goal. Kept many lying on the floor. That was a true tackle. No sign of a card. Stephen Archer. Uh, he can use another one that's a bit fortunate. Referee's been a bit lenient with him, hasn't he? Vincent will take the free kick. Comfortable header for Matteo. Irons. This is Donis. Francis with the cross. Stewart beyond the far post. Almost came for Gray, who's still forward, but best of all reached it. That was a good take. Sort of take keepers do take, but it was a vital one. I think Gray was just seeing the end of a ball in an empty net there. The replays for the FA Cup are on Wednesday week and the big match 
on that Wednesday night. We'll have the best of the third round replays. Live football tonight on ITV2. That comes from the Italian Serie A, and it's Juventus versus Inter Milan, and it's 7.25 tonight on ITV2. Fine half. Into the path of Donis. Possibilities here. Donis tried his luck. Might still come for Stewart. That was a bit ambitious from the Greek, but it almost ricocheted into the path of Marcus Stewart. Yeah, I thought when he received it there, he's going to knock it on the outside of the defender and run into the grass with his pace, but uh, opted to go for a shot. And unfortunately, for Marcus Stewart's header wasn't carrying much. Just over a quarter of an hour remaining. Huddersfield threat has been relentless, but no end product. Mark contrast, Liverpool have scored either side of half-time through Titi Camera and Dominic Mattia. Deep Mahama. Throwing his Huddersfield. I think one thing, another plus point from the Liverpool point of view is you have to say that regardless, no matter how much pressure they've been under, they've still kept their, their way of playing. Gerard. Here's Song. They've almost pushed into a three at the back now with Song. He's, he's almost gone into that narrow position. There's the Yorkshire Imperial Brass Band. Two cornets, one soprano, one drum, one flugelhorn will travel. And they are the cheerleaders of the McAlpine Stadium. Not that they've needed much encouragement this afternoon, the Huddersfield fans. The team's performance has provided a lot of that. Kenny Irons. Carragher got to it. Gerard. Carragher. Song. Well, even Michael Owen won't reach that. This is his fifth game in a row, and he's had that kind of run until now this season. His hamstring problems dated back to April. Borrage Lions. Jenkins. Adonis. Gorrit. Trying to slip it in a fine heart, who uh, levered Kirkier off the court, which takes it to him. <laughs> Sammy sees the funny side of that. They'll know they've been in a game, though, regardless. I mean, even if they do come out the right side, the two central defenders, Herpier uh, and Honchess. Sellers slipping song playing Stewart in Weinhardt is waiting it's Marcus Stewart Festival did just enough oh, Murphy in trouble though survived it now Donis Gore Francis little flick from Weinhardt well how on earth have Huddersfield gone this far without scoring at least once Marcus Stewart providing. That was a great opportunity then, though, for Stewart. You thought he could have been a little bit more selective with his fight, with his last ball. Donus was clear on the, on the back post. Beinard had a good position, but fortunately just played it a little bit close on the keeper. Now, this is where he's got to get ahead of steam if he hasn't threatened with his pace yet. Gorek into Beinhardt. Here is Donis! Beaten away by Vestervelt. It's managed to lift it over his crossbar. 
Good effort. Good strong effort. Beautiful layoff here from the centre forward. Holds the defender up by heart. Puts it right in uh, Donis's path. Pity it wasn't a little bit to the, to the side of the, the big goalkeeper. Well, I'll tell you what, full marks, Huddersfield there, coming and coming on. A lot better sides than them, or a lot higher sides than them, would have packed in with Liverpool two up. Vincent will take the corner. It's Ward Stewart. Murphy it is who guides it rather uncertainly away. You know, Clive, I told a lot of people yesterday game and they're saying, as the FA Cup lost its sort of magic, this is a great cup tie, this. Jenkins to Dollis. Tackle by Murphy, Jenkins going in wholeheartedly, but so too Murphy. Now camera. Oh, he's done well. Got outside irons. Cross wasn't the best. Vincent heads away. Dean Gore. Back to Jamie Vincent. Song's header, not quite what he intended. Oh, for a minute it looked up, it did very well. It, it looks like we're going to play a chancy back pass to the keeper. Here's Owen. Change of direction, which has completely defeated Greg. Vincent got back there. And the free kick has gone Huddersfield's way. Well, a year ago, only one Premiership team was victim of a third round shock at the first time of asking. That was ailing Nottingham Forest. Southampton and West Ham followed up for replays. Goalkeeper off limits to deny Stewart. Really, aside from Rushton taking leads to a second game, that was the sum total of the surprise packets this time last year. We had four yesterday. And Huddersfield could have provided a fifth today. May still, who knows? We've got some miracle working to do in the last ten minutes. Weinhardt. Sellers. Vincent with a cross, it's a good one. Gore's there, might come for Jenkins, but hops away by Murphy. Donis. Jenkins. Irons. Vincent to Weinhardt. out to George Ostonis again oh, it's a terrific cross Rigobert song away Steve Jenkins rolled into Marcus Stewart Jenkins Donis Stewart able to turn on the half turn at least but run off the ball by Herpia Owen back to Gerard. look where Herpia is good use of the ball though Titi Camera. do anything in a plane sort of way does he Liverpool just trying to wind the clock down and turn the heat down isn't it? oh wait he's played Matteo in I think once is quite enough for one afternoon Dominic <laughs> But he I'm enjoyed his goal. I'm just wondering how surprised he was that uh, Owen laid that one off to him. It's a great setting up for him, but uh, I thought Owen might have had a little dip with his left foot there. He, he played the right ball, to be fair. Well, when you've doubled your career total in one afternoon, then I think it's probably best to declare. Change is to bring on teenage striker Danny Schofield. In place of Marcus Stewart, who as much as anything just needs a change of luck. Schofield, who was man of the match on his debut in the final game of last season, he's only made a couple of substitute appearances this. He's a Doncaster lad. Ok, 
near the ice. Georgia Stoll is down to Steve Jenkins. Right heart. Oh, it's a lovely turn, but he just couldn't quite keep his feet. Here's a box of tricks, though. Sellers. And here goes Fine Hart again. Stephen Onshaw will be glad to see the back of him. You can see it again here as he twiddles and twirls. Some got in a challenge on Sellers. Vincent's cross. A little ambitious. And it's now 1v1 at the back. That one, well, now they've regrouped now. If anything going to come early is Mike, Michael Owen won against the last defender. But, I mean, that's how they've got to go. They, they've just got to go for it. Um, what does feel now? What do you mean now? <laughs> they have been going Yeah, they've it. been brilliant. To Through be two o'clock, haven't they? Yeah. And they've done it with quality. Energy, effort, but great quality. Talking of energy, here's Michael Owen. not had an FA Cup run since losing to Eric Cantona's let go at Wembley in 1996. Robbie Farmer and Jamie Redknapp are the only two who played that day now with the club. Their last FA Cup win was seven years ago. Seven years which have yielded just one trophy. One of the unsolved mysteries of recent seasons. And there's the man who's doing his best to solve the mystery and I have to make the comment Liverpool have backed his judgement to the extent of making their first ever annual loss last year and their chief executive Rick Parry talked at the AGM recently of the necessity to qualify for the Champions League at least in order to start to justify the £5 million loss that Liverpool made last year they speculation in order to try and build a winning squad again and they're heading in the right direction and if they get if they go all the way this year and who's to say they won't if they go all the way this year they'll not face anybody much better than this on the evidence of today Gore was caught by Hamad and they still have a free kick just outside the Liverpool penalty area Vinard, what's he had? Five, six reasonable chances. Still wants to take this by the look of it. No, he's been warned of it. <laughs> Kenny Irons is the usual specialist. Sellers and Vincent, the two left footers, are there too. It seems to suit Irons' side. It's Irons, who's it deflected. It's brushed the wall and over for a corner kick. Hadn't scored since he got the winner at Chelsea back in October. He scored a bundle for Tramier last season. Vincent takes. Turned away by Onsho and there's a foul there. Another part of free kick. to see uh, another young local Liverpool product John Newby who's uh, just 21 Stephen Gerrard is going to be replaced <laughs> Newby was in that youth cup winning team of uh, 1996 with Michael Owen it's essentially a forward going to slot in on that right hand side in front of Rigobert Song Only previous appearances have been in the Worthington Cup. Yes. 
I'll tell you what you mentioned about Shanks yesterday in the history, that earlier about the history and everything leading up to it. He'd have enjoyed this match, wouldn't he? <laughs> He'd have enjoyed seeing his two all sides having a go like this. And the quality of it as well. The result of Bill Shanks' last match in charge of Huddersfield Town in 1959. A win over Liverpool. Certain symmetry as we come round to his 40th anniversary. And Liverpool are about to record a win over Huddersfield. Last of the 90 minutes. Matteo, camera. Given that uh, Fowler is close, given that Berger is close, Redknapp still to come. How close are Liverpool now to where they need to be, Ron, do you think? Well, they certainly have got uh, certainly in the attacking zone. Funnily enough, the part of the thing that still leaves me a little bit, let's see if they score. I hope they don't. <laughs> It'd be cruel for... Uh, they're going to win the game. It'd be cruel for us, though. I'm still not as convinced by the, the back unit. Um, and yet, you know, they look as if they've kept a clean sheet. The Huddersfield to go up? Oh, on the evidence of this, I haven't seen a better side in the division this season. But I don't know quite how big a squad uh, Steve's got. Looks as if he's, well, he has, he's got a very good team. Whether his squad is strong enough, or whether he's got to reinforce a bit in terms of new numbers. Well, it's interesting, of the top six in last season's first division who owned a promotion or a playoff place, none of them got involved in a cup run. They're all out by the fourth round. So that's the consolation today. What he's certainly done, he's certainly shown a, what a good advert Huddersfield are for the division. A couple of those yesterday, too. I tell one, you the hardy, one of the hardest jobs today commentator might have been if you'd have had to pick the man of the match. I, mean, it, I think everybody on the field has acquitted themselves excellently. Go on, then. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I think might be a very strong contender for me, Scott Sellers and Kenny Irons. And daft as it may seem, the big lad up front has missed all the chances because he's kept going in there battling. Liverpool, Haman's played well. The boy Gerard, who you were on about earlier, has played well. Yep. Keepers, keepers. Uh, hey, we've only got so much champagne, okay. I know. But they all deserve a nice drink afterwards. It's been a very worthwhile Sunday afternoon. Regabat Song in towards Michael Owen. His last match as a teenager. His 100th for Liverpool. Ayers. Fine heart to Gore. Free kick has been given. Gore was caught. We have the draw for the fourth round of the FA Cup still to come in the programme. This is Jenkins. And Liverpool will be in the hat for the fourth round draw. Goals either side of half time by TD Camera and Dominic Matteo have seen off Steve Bruce's brave and talented side. Camera's dramatic volley followed by an equally dramatic break from one end of the field to the other, rounded off by Dominic Matteo. Four marks for Liverpool, but hard